Hey everyone, Fixate here, and in today's video, I will show you why Shoreline is one of the best scav maps in Escape from Tarkov. I'll present to you why I like Shoreline the best, how to effectively route the map, tips and tricks to maximize your runs, and how many rubles per hour you can expect to average. For every EFT player, it is very important to have a consistent means of making rubles so that you can limit the pain and suffering of those difficult to handle deaths and to allow you to play more freely, knowing that you can make your losses back when you have a tough day. Before I made this video, I decided to do 10 shoreline runs with my specific route and strategy. I sold every single thing I got to vendors or to the flea market to see how much money I could make as well as keeping track of the exact amount of time each run took. A bunch of these runs were done live right here on YouTube, so I'll have a link in the video description below for the VOD. Here's how they went. So in total, we made 7.655 million rubles in 150 minutes of time. And that is in raid time only, not time selling and not time queuing up for the raid. Keep that in mind. That's an average of 765,000 rubles every 15 minutes. We also had a 100% survival rate living through all 10 of the raids. Now I do recognize that 10 runs is a small sample size, but it still gives you a good sense of what's possible. I've been doing these runs for a very, very long time, and I've seen similar results throughout. Let's talk about why Shoreline is the best. If you are scaving in EFT, then it's usually for two reasons. Either you need rubles to pad your bankroll, or you need found and raid items for tasks or for your hideout. What's most important when considering these two reasons is your scav surviving the raid. Dying is an obvious huge setback to your rubles per raid average. Which brings me to the most important reason to choose shoreline for your scav runs, and that is survivability. Shoreline has a 50 minute start time for the PMCs and more than 90% of the time you spawn in as a scav, it's at the 20 minute mark. This means that the PMCs have generally long exited the map after their usual beeline push to the resort for the rare loot spawns. Also, since nearly all the PMCs focus on the resort loot, it means that all of the remaining loot is up for grabs by you and all the other scavs spawning in at the 20 minute mark. The second most important reason to make Shoreline your scav map is the sheer number of hidden caches, jackets, and red duffel bags in such a close proximity to our primary looting area, which is the village. I've been running Shoreline as my main scav run for a few wipes now, and I've always believed it to be the most consistent money-making map, with its high survivability rate and volume of uncontested lootable containers. Now, before we get into the primary route and the spawn points, I want to go over a couple quick tips and tricks. And the first one is your backpack. A key to maximizing your run is to have a backpack, and sometimes we aren't blessed with a backpack when we spawn in, or we have one of the smallest bags available. Make adjustments to your primary route if needed to loot points of interest that have a high likelihood of dead scavs to get a backpack. All of your scav spawn points can have dead scavs nearby, along with Terminal, which is south of the west wing of Resort. Also, keep in mind, the higher your scav rep is with Fence, the better chance you will have of getting a backpack along with other higher quality items to start your run. The next very important tip is learn the loot table. Learning everything you can about the items in the game and their value is hugely important because you will constantly be dropping lower value items and replacing them with higher value items throughout your run. At a very, very minimum, you are looking to have at least each one by one slot to have a value of 10,000 rubles or more. For new players, learning all the loot in the game will take some time. So continue to actively see what items are selling for on the flea market and keep in mind that these values can decrease based on how long into the wipe you are as the demand for some items becomes less and less. I put together a quick list of very good items for you to keep your eye on. When looking at this list, if you can't quickly tell me a rough estimate of the flea market values for the items you see here, then you should take the time to search them all up and commit them to memory. These items can range between 1 million rubles all the way down to 15,000 rubles in value, so make sure you have a good sense of priority when it comes to looting these items. I'll have a link to this image in the description below. 
Another very important tip is the time of day and your server selection. So the time of day that you do your raids will definitely have an impact on how many players there are going to be in the raid. Early morning hours have less people queuing and thus less competition for you. Also, taking your game off auto server selection and manually selecting four or five servers near your area is another method of reducing the amount of players that you'll encounter. Again, the less competition for the loot, the better your results will be, obviously. Okay, let's start with talking about the primary route, and then we'll talk about the spawns and how they connect to the start of the primary route. So the primary route starts at construction, moves to cottages, then to downtown, and ultimately the village. From there, you'll have access to the three most common extraction points, Svetili Dead End, Ruined House Fence, and Ruined Road. Now it's time to take a closer look at the route. We'll go step by step all the way through the most important parts. Here we are at construction and we're gonna come in and we're gonna go to this northern corner here by this bush and we're gonna hit the first cache. Then on our way out, there is gonna be some loose loot on these boxes here as well as on the ground, on the bricks and on the wood planks on the right. Then we're going to run out. We're going to skip the first cottage on the right because it is locked. We are going to go into the second one. We're going to go in this door here on the red fence and hit this bag inside here. And hang a quick left and go right into this cottage. Now, if this door is open, that means this place has been looted and you can actually skip this entire area. The likelihood of someone missing any of these loot spawns here is very low. But if the doors are closed, you're sitting pretty. This is probably unlooted. Upstairs, first things first, we have a safe. Safes can really impact the value of a run. We're going to open this door up and the top blue box here also registers as a safe spawn. And then the bottom blue is a weapon rack. Then we go into the next room. We hit the PC, hope for a graphics card. But we'll take things like power cores and... PSU units and things like that. We have two jackets behind the door. Jackets are huge on this run. We've got another red duffel right there as well, and we're out. We're going to cross the street right here and go right down by the water. And we're going to get into this little peninsula here. There's going to be a wooden box here. And then we have another hidden cache right at the end. And turn around, go straight back from where we came, but we're going to hug left this time. We're going to angle just this direction here, and we're going to go right towards this broken down house, and there's another hidden cache right here by the rocks. We're going to do a little bit of a turn, and we're going to go right into... The downtown area. This is the kind of coming in from the corner side. We got a wooden box. We got a toolbox. And we got a red duffel. We've also got loose loot right there. We go into the next house, go upstairs. There is a single red duffel up here. We're going to come back down. Take a left out of the door, but we're going to kind of sneak between the wooden house and the wall there and then go left. And we're going to go in the garage of the next house and open this door. There are going to be two jackets here. And there's loose loot on this table. And we also have a duffel here and another duffel here. Take a left. Next wooden house. Another jacket and a medical spawn. The jackets are huge. Um, if you're new to the game or it's the beginning of a wipe, getting the keys is clutch. And getting duplicate keys that you can sell, some keys can go for upwards of a million. So hitting so many jacket spawns in such a close proximity is a huge deal. Because you can really strike it rich with a single key. Got two more jackets there. We're going to come out, hit this hidden cache. Got a wooden box here. 
Open this door. This door spawns closed. So if this door is open, it's possible that this area has been looted. But not everyone loots it as cleanly as you might think. There is always the option to audible into going to the swamp area. If you feel like this place is absolutely picked clean, you can audible and go to the swamp, which we'll have coming up later in the video. We have a loose loot spawn here and here. Another jacket spawn in this. Come out here across the street, take a, a little bit of a left here. We've got four more jackets. And a duffel in this house on the left here. One jacket. Two, three. Duffel. And then there's a hidden jacket kind of behind the door at the entrance of the door here. All right. I'm gonna continue to head down the road towards the Svetili dead end here. And we're gonna Hit this cache. Right next to that cache is another one in this circular concrete. Kind of hidden there. And I like to hug far left here. There is a toolbox and some loose loot over here as well. Loose loot on these planks right here. We're going to cut back in, go in here, hit this house for two more jacket spawns and some loose loot. Loose loot in this corner in like three different spots and then in this little green crate right there. I come back out the way we came and I'm going to hit this top side. There is more down in the area, but I hit it on the way out. We go in here, check the shelving units. Gonna see sewing kits and all kinds of stuff on these. Keck tape. Get that crate right there. Scissors, you never know. There's a lot of good stuff that can spawn in there. And we're gonna cross the street. And more loose loot on these shelves. Got a toolbox and then loose loot on that little counter right there. And there's a food spawn right there. Out the back door into this little garage, a single toolbox here. We're gonna go up and over the trash can and take a hard left into this little wooden area here and hit this crate. We're gonna loot this yellow house. Jacket, loose loot there, loose loot on the table, loose loot right here. We got a toolbox, loose loot on the bed, and then we've got a red duffel. Just outside the door, right in front of the bush, there's another hidden cache right there. And we're gonna go into this little door right here and hit this jacket. All right, so now we're at the wall and we're gonna take a left here towards uh, Svetli Dead End. But we're not gonna go all the way. There's a little hole in the wall here on the left. We're gonna go right into there. Hit this red house here. Got a jacket, we've got a duffel, and we've got a toolbox. We're gonna come out and straight out the door there's another jacket. Cross the street into the area that we kind of skipped at the very beginning, but it's kind of easier to access in this way, in my opinion. Faster. Go here, hit the red duffel. Bunch of loose loot in this house on the table on the right here, as well as at the top of the stairs in like an arc. There you go. Be stuff just lying around the floor there. I'm gonna go back out, open this door, and we have a jacket in here. And there's also loose loot on this little bench right there as well. Back the way we came. Take a left. Now we're looking right at. Fetley dead end, and there's a hidden cache here against the wall. So now you have the option. You know, depending on where you spawn, Svetli might be an exit, or you can take the wall all the way to the left, and that'll take you to Ruined Road, or you can take the wall all the way to the right, and that will take you to Ruined House Fence. 
And that's it. That's the bulk of the route. Now we're, let's take a look at all the spawns and how we can connect them to the starting point at construction. So this is Crane. This is the furthest east that you can be on the map. And there's a couple caches that we can take on the way in. There's one. We're going to head outside across the street towards the big rock and get to another cache. So being this far east means that the competition that you have to get once you get to the village area is going to be a lot higher. So it could be looted by the time you get there. So we're going to loot everything on our way there and evaluate once we get there. If it is looted, we can kind of audible into the swamp area, which we'll be showing here in a little bit, as there is actually a spawn, a scav spawn in the swamp area. So it'll give us an opportunity to show you that route as well. Just past this wooden house up here, you're going to see a cache in this exact bush. And I like to go and start getting right up and hug the mountainside there. Now this is weather station that we're coming up on, which is also a scav spawn point. So you could spawn up top here as well. And if you do, make sure you hustle right in and check to see if the safe, more specifically, has been looted and some of the other boxes. We've got a duffel, we've got a medical crate, as well as a bunch of drawers and a computer and some loose loot as well. Loose loot right there at the bottom of the server racks and then we've got the three drawers. And then we're out. We're going to head towards power station. Straight out the door, straight towards power. We're going to hit one cache on the way in. Underneath the bridge that the tank is on. Again, all these areas that we spawn can have dead scavs. So... You're always looking to make sure that you're maximizing your backpack space as well as your rig space. Here's the cache underneath the bridge. We're going to continue to follow and you can see these power lines. That's going to indicate that we're right at the power station. Also a spawn. Spawn right here on this hill or down right into the blue fences. All right, so power station, we're diving in. This place gets hit pretty hard by PMCs, so a lot of likelihood that there's dead scavs here. We're gonna go inside this door. We've got a red uh, a toolbox and then a red duffel. I'm gonna go into the next room, hit two jackets. as well as another red duffel in this back room. We're gonna head on out and we're gonna go up the metal stairs and hit two toolboxes. And now we're gonna head out. So if you're happy with the way that your rig and your backpack looks at this point, you can go right to construction and start the primary route, or you can go up to the right here, which is terminal. Now this is not a spot where you can spawn as a scav, but there are a lot of scavs AI that spawn up here and another opportunity to upgrade your rig and backpack. This is just south of the west wing of the resort. And we're going to go in the back door here. And you're going to get some loose loot spawns on the shelves here. Some good stuff. Water filter there. You're going to find a bunch of stuff. 
Um, check the dead scav. And then shelving again, shelving again. And on the ground right here, there's also some loose loot. As well as in this box right here. And then you have another black weapons crate. We're going to check here. We have loose loot on those blue shells. We're going to open the door. We have a cabinet structure. As well as two jackets behind the door. And from here, we're going to straight dip right to construction and start the primary route. Just kind of head southwest and you'll see a fully enclosed construction site uh, with a blue fence. And there it is. Now we're ready to start the route that we showed to begin with. Okay, the next spawn point is the pier slash gas station because they're right next to each other. This is the pier. You'll see this building pier. This is a hotly contested area for PMCs, but we're going to check it anyway since we spawn right next to it. We've got three drawer structures here, and then we're going to quickly go upstairs and check the safes. A lot of PMC action here because of those safes. We've got two safes in close proximity as well as two computers. And we're going to dip out. And there is a dead scav outside in the corner of the blue wall. Check him. The dead scavs are actually probably slept on. There, there's some good loot to be had out of them. And we're going to head towards the gas station. And you can spawn up at the gas station. It's, actually, it's up to you if you want to double back and go check those safes. Those safes are looted most of the time. But when they're not, it's uh, it's pretty lucrative, so it may be worth your while to double back and double check those safes. Um, at the very least, you can come down this hill into these four blue squares, and there is the uh, hidden cache here. And now we're gonna head, we're gonna head kind of north west so you do have the option here do you want to head straight north and go to power station and search dead scavs and then go up to terminal and then go down to construction or do you want to just beeline right at construction and you do have that option if you want to you can just head straight north from here in this particular example since we've already taken a look at power and terminal i'm just going to show you the angle to take you right to construction which is basically northwest and here we are coming up on the unmistakable blue walls to start construction. And once again, from pier and from gas station, this is how you start your run. All right, time to take a look at resort. So a lot of people believe that when they're scabbing on shoreland, they should run and loot resort and try and find dead PMCs. And while that is an option, um, you're going to find that nine times out of ten there's it's either a already been looted or b there's not as much action as you think there so for me even when spawning in resort the only time i'm going into the actual resort is to search for bags and rigs off of dead scavs um, but i will right from resort start heading southwest and go towards terminal and check there for a new backpack, a new rig, and loot the building in terminal, and then get right to uh, the primary route, which is starting construction, which we've already seen. But this is what it looks like coming in from this angle. All right, next spawn point on the agenda is Scab Island. This is just south of Village and Downtown. And a nice spawn point because it's the closest scav spawn point to where we're trying to start our route. Um, so you spawn down here. Obviously, you just saw we had a weapons crate, we had a hidden cache, and we had we've got now our third wooden box. I'm gonna hop in here really quick. Check the green. Check the green crate. We've got two medical crates out front, and we're gonna beeline it across. Now, this is the only scav spawn point that I've ever seen not have either Ruin Road, Betley Dead End, or Ruin House Fence as an extract option. And when that happens, 
your cl the best course of action is for you to extract from admin basement or um, east wing gym entrance, which is up at the resort. If I don't have ruined house fence as an extract, I will skip part of the primary route here. So I will hit this cache on the way in. And then I will go right into downtown. So I'm basically going to ultimately skip construction and the villas and the cottages. And I will then go and do all of swamp after. So I will go through, do downtown village, and then go do swamp and then go out admin basement. It's really up to you though. If you do have ruined house fence, you can double back and go to construction and start the route like normal. Okay, now the final scav spawn point is out by swamp by path of shoreline exit and it's going to be kind of near this big rock and you're going to see on the right you're going to see the swamp down there and we're going to go over to this big rock here um because we might find a couple dead scavs there's two or three that can spawn over here as well as a couple green crates and when i get this spawn point i'm i'm looting swamp first right away it's the only spawn where i don't try to get to the construction starting point um, that we've seen in all the other spawns that I showed you. Um, and the reason being is because Swamp's not bad. Swamp's pretty darn good. It's not as good as Downtown Village, but it's pretty darn good. Um, and we can always rotate back to Downtown and Village if we need to. So we're going to go down here and hit this little island. Hit the wood box. Walk into the Swamp. And the Swamp does slow you down if you didn't know. I'm sure you do. But if you didn't know, it slows you down a lot. It's a good chance to regen your stam. We're going to hit this hidden cache, and then we're going to immediately hit this broken house on the right here. Alright, coming up we've got two wood crates here, and then one on the inside. And we're going to hustle out, we're going to go towards the church. Just follow the wooden planks to help guide you. I'll go left into the church, and then we've got another wooden box in here. And then we're gonna head out, and now you, you kind of right after this fence, you're gonna take a left into kind of a dirt, a dirt little path there. You see that? And that's gonna lead you to this house and the side house of it, which has a hidden cache as well. And then we're gonna double back the way we just came in, but take a left. Get back onto this little path here. We're gonna hit the next house on the right, and we've got two wooden boxes in here, a grenade case and a weapon case. And we're going to come by out and we're going to hit another hidden cache. We're going to take right in between this fence here that's broken. And then we'll see this fence on the right. And we're going to kind of loop around inside of it. And we are going to hit this hidden cache. I head out. And that big house on the, on the end there is kind of like a nice marker for you. Um, that house is in between Swamp and Svetly Dead End. Um, there is a cache here by this little grouping of fence and wood planks and we definitely want to hit this house now pmc's do spawn here so a lot of times when they do they they loot the house so this door spawns closed if you see it open it's likely already been looted but you can always double check a lot of loose loot in this room and then a lot of loose loot in this room on the chair on the bed and on the ground there and then we've got loose loot on the shelves and in the corner um, and then we have the toolbox so from here, you can push towards all the way back to construction if you want to do the whole run, or you can go right to downtown, or you can go right to Svetly Dead End. Um, it's really up to you how you want to proceed from there. And you can also do this route in reverse from Svetly if you have a lot of time remaining. Let's say you did your downtown village run and you had a lot of extra time. You could come and try and check this house and that hidden cache before extracting at Ruin House Fence if you have the time. That's the end of the video. I tried to give a lot of detail to help benefit newer players and hopefully even veteran players uh, that haven't played too much Shoreline. If I missed anything or you have any questions at all, feel free to let me know in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching. As always, if you learned something new, then a like would be super appreciated. And if you're looking to find your way back for more EFT, then make sure to drop a sub and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Good luck in your raids.